All right, welcome back, everyone. Finally, today, after a long while, I'm going to talk about my complete Emacs org mode workflow for publishing documents, fiction, short stories, any type of writing you're doing. You need to go from your Emacs master format, your plain text file, maybe to something like a Microsoft Word document or a PDF. Basically, the world will require from you different formatted documents for different purposes. Um, so you want to be able to participate with all these different markets or people or places. Uh, and with Emacs, you can do that. You can export to different places and different formats pretty easily. So I'm going to show my particular workflow. And of course, I'll have the blog post below with code snippets, anything that may be helpful to illustrate how this is all working. All right, so the first thing, I'm just in a blank scratch buffer here. There's nothing happening, of course. Um, and I have a function that basically just will create uh, a document. I'm going to do for this example a short story uh, because this provides the full process. I'll write something in org mode, send it to a publisher or an online magazine or an editor in a Microsoft Word document, which is what most of them want these days if they're taking digital submissions. And um, they'll get back to me whether they like it or not, and then they'll publish it, and then the process is over. Uh, so we're going to go through that whole process. So the first thing, I have a function. I'm going to do a meta x here. It's my own function uh, to create a new short story. So it's going to prompt me for a keyword down here. Um, this keyword, what's nice about org mode is this can be anything. Um, it doesn't have to be uh, descriptive of whatever the story is. I may not have a title yet. I may not have all of that figured out. Um, so I can put anything here. Um, let's just say uh, a video game horror story, or even more descriptive, haunted video game horror story. So again, the file name doesn't matter, as you'll see, because here in the org mode document, I can put any title in here. It doesn't have to be that. But that was what I put in the keyword phrase what that keyword also does in the prompt is it creates this line here. Um, this is the export file name. So actually, the file name, again, doesn't matter because not only can I change the title, which will be more important when we export this to the document, I can actually put a different file name where this will, will be exported. So um, this created automatically by my function. It also created a timestamped file in a, a directory called capture, which is where the stories go. Uh, by default, or whether it's a short story, it goes in a certain directory. If it's an article or something from my website, it goes in a different directory. Basically, the function is doing that for me. Um, so I can call this anything I want. I have an idea. I'm going to use um, an existing story that was already published. Uh, it was the haunted video game story. It was called Dead Pixels. So that's going to be the title, the official title of the story. And, um, you know, for the file name, I can just put you know, CM, which are my initials, and then, you know, dead pixels. And again, the file extension doesn't matter because we're going to be exporting, you know, maybe to different files. We may have a, a WordPress document, or pardon, a Microsoft document, if that's what they want. It might be a PDF if that's what they want. It doesn't matter. So we're going to use a generic title name or file name there. Uh, okay, so, so that's the first part. And then now you, uh, you know, you just start writing the story in org mode. I'm going to copy and paste in the full text of the existing story because um, I don't want to show you something that was unfinished because that would look really bad. Okay, so I've just brought in the text of the story. So this is it here. This is a complete org mode document and uh, it's a, a fully written story. Here I have a scene break. Um, sometimes I like to read the story in HTML. So if I export it to HTML, it'll just put a horizontal rule between uh, the sections of the story. If there's a scene break, it'll put that, uh, but that's not really necessary. That's just for HTML, as I said. This is more important because if I am sending this to a Microsoft Word document, which as I mentioned is the most common format that's usually required, scene breaks will be denoted by uh, this little hash mark here. And this is some styling that will center it in the open office document template that then we'll be exporting to the Microsoft Word document. So uh, ignore that for now. You'll see how that works later. Uh, basically, this block here is an export block that will only be used when this is exported to an open office document. Um, so this is how you take your org mode document and you can get this element here into the 
the open office document that will or can be exported to multiple other formats which is um, kind of a good go-between your open office uh, LibreOffice writer program and of course a good question might be well why not just write in open office so then you can just save your file in whatever format you need well if you're an Emacs user you know the answer is obvious you want to compose an Emacs because it's a better editor in general all right so so now we have the complete story here all that's left is to export this in org mode when you're going to export something you'll do control C control E and it brings up the, the export dispatcher here so I can go to uh, HTML, LaTeX. I can go to OpenOffice right here. Now, the reason I don't export to OpenOffice to the ODT file from here, uh, I'll show you why. Because if you use this, um, it works just fine. Uh, but if you're going to use an existing template, you can only set one template with this method, and you'll set it in the metadata of your org mode file. So it would be something like um, you would just write the line in there, kind of like this file path. You would give a file path to a template and this exporter would use that. The problem is, like I said, um, there might be different instances, different types of formatting. So if I'm just going to print this out for myself to read and uh, leave notes on it or for my uh, critique group, um, I will not do a double space format because that would use up a lot more paper. Um, so basically, I'm going to show you here. We're not going to use this dispatcher. Basically, I have my own function. So the function that uh, I'll use is, um, well, here I'll show you. It's uh, uh, office export control C O. So when we do control C O, it asks me a few things here in the mini buffer. It asks me if I want to preserve line breaks. Believe it or not, there are some publications that want you to have hard line breaks, kind of like you have in the file here. So this would do that for me. Um, in this instance, uh, we're going to do standard manuscript format, which does not preserve these hard line breaks. So I'm going to hit no uh, body only. Uh, also, that that is useful in some instances when you don't want the the title to be in the document or your author information. There are some places that don't want your name on it. They do blind submissions. So again, yeah, these are different options that I have. In this case, no, we're not going to do body only. We want the whole thing, name, author, everything. Okay, so now instead of having only one template declaration in the metadata of the file, it prompts me for my different templates. And these are hard coded into the function. So, um, you know, I basically give it a, a friendly name like this one, user friendly, and then a file path to where that template resides. Um, so in this case, uh, we're going to do a writer's market SMF standard uh, manuscript format. That's the, the most common format uh, that different publications will ask for and if they don't specify a specific format that's usually the the default one that's industry acceptable the professional format um, but you see i have other ones here so print saver is something that'll be a more printer friendly one uh, critique group is the particular format i'll use when i'm bringing it in for the critique um, single space no indent there are some publications that want that uh, but basically uh, yeah this is more efficient for me to just have these formats in this list here. So, all right, we're going to do writer's market standard manuscript format. And there, so you see it just exported the file cm dead pixels dot uh, open office document. Uh, so let's go actually and open that document now. All right, so this is the, the exported format here. So this is the standard manuscript format. Uh, that I mentioned. You see it's double spaced, it's Times New Roman font, which in Linux you have to install special, uh, 12 point font size. Um, the margins are about, I think, one inch all around uh, with my name and the page number in the header. This is all standard stuff. And like I mentioned, that for the scene breaks, like I mentioned, you have to put the little hash mark. That is right here. So that came in the, the org mode document. And I have a function for inserting that, so I don't have to remember that each time because it's kind of a, a cumbersome little line. But basically, it works. Uh, okay, so this now, uh, we're not totally done yet. Um, to make this more professional, you're going to put the word count here, round it to the nearest hundredth. Uh, I know this all seems maybe a little silly if you've never done this, but these are just the, the nice things you do when you're sending your work out. You want it to look professional. So this story is 2,000 words. So that's it. I'll just put that there, save this. And now we have this open office document. Okay. So now we can just uh, save this as a Microsoft 
a Word document, as I mentioned, because that's usually the most popular format that most publications will ask for. So we, in OpenOffice, this is easy. You just go down here and select uh, Word, whichever one is the .ocx, so this Word uh, 20, 2007 365, that's the most common format that they want, so I'll just do that, save it, and that's it. This is now a Microsoft Word document. And of course, like I said, I've tested this. I sent this story out like this and many others, and it is industry acceptable. It works for them. Even though it's generated from Linux, it doesn't matter. Uh, to them, it looks the same. And as I mentioned, this story was published, so it went through the whole cycle, and that's it. So that's how you go from Emacs org mode to out in the world sending your stuff out. And if you are writing, that's what you got to do. You got to write all the time, finish what you write, send what you write out to editors. And that is the whole process. Just rinse and repeat. All right, well, that's it. Thank you for watching. I will go ahead and close the video there. I'll talk to you all next time.